Hi everybody, I dive to take photographs, and this can be somewhat problematic on drift dives. You're drifting along the reef, and if you do find an interesting subject, you don't have much time to approach the subject gradually, compose a picture, and focus on it. Not only that, if you take some time with fo photographing something on a drift dive, you often lose the dive group, and this can be a problem. It's happened to me, all right? Now, on the other hand, with drift diving, all the nutrients bring in life. You can see beautiful coral heads, sometimes some amazing large animals, and you don't have to expend a lot of energy while you're drifting along. You get to see a relatively large portion of the, of the reef. So in this video, I'm gonna give my tips on underwater photography while drift diving. Let's check it out. <clears throat> First, Safety always comes first. Pay attention to your navigation and do not lose the dive group. This has happened to me on more than one occasion. On drift dives, I also often run low on air before my dive buddies, usually from expending extra energy by going ahead, kicking against the current to get various shots. Always carry a safety sausage just in case you have to surface before the rest of the group. Number two, shoot wide angle or close focus wide angle. On drift dives, I rarely shoot macro since I would usually have so little time to find, approach, and focus on a small subject. And even if I can pause for a while by grabbing, grabbing a rock or going behind a coral head to avoid the current, I'm still not gonna be able to have very much time to take the photographs or I'm gonna lose the dive group. On drift dives, I almost always use strobes to restore color and stop the action. I have shot using available light only if in shallow areas, like 20 feet or less, but this is unusual. I shoot in manual mode and use my strobes to stop the action and restore color and detail in the foreground. As soon as I am in the water, I adjust my shutter speed to obtain the blue water background that I want, and I try to keep my ISO as low as possible. I try not to make many changes once I get the correct blue water background. Also, when shooting close focus wide angle, I make sure to focus on the foreground, then lock my focus while recomposing the picture. Otherwise, the camera will automatically refocus on the more distant subject, and the foreground subject will be blurred. Very disappointing, and I've done that many times. See more on my close focus wide angle video series for more on this. Here's a wide angle camera setup that I often use. Um, on drift dives. I use two strobes and keep them somewhat close to the dome port for two reasons. One, I like to be somewhat streamlined while drifting along, and two, I can light the near subject when I do close focus wide angle. Now there is an exception. If I'm really close to the near subject doing close focus wide angle, I uh, <clears throat> pull my strobes in much tighter to make sure the center of the near subject is illuminated. This beautiful red coral looks huge, but you won't believe it, it was only about six by six inches in size. I just got really close to it. I love the perspective distortion one gets in size with close focus wide angle where the near subject looks so much larger than it really is. I love the red color too. Here's the strobe position I use when I am really close to the near subject like shown in the previous image. Or in this image here, I was really close to these feather dusters in the foreground and I got my dive buddy in the background. Another tip. Look way ahead, if possible, for potential subject matter, so you can think as you're drifting toward it how to compose the image before you drift by the subject. I particularly like to look for orange or red coral in sponges as near subjects, as my strobe will bring out these beautiful colors, which are a really nice complement to the blue water background. Of course, it's always fun to spot fishes or animals for foreground subject matter, but remember with wide angle and on drift dives, you need to get fairly close and it's hard to, um, <clears throat> to, have much, to spend much time getting these animals to accept your presence and to allow a close approach. Sometimes I might spot a really cool large animal in the open water on the other side of the wall, like an eagle ray or shark, but unfortunately I've been only rarely able to get very close to these subjects. Another tip. Keep ahead of the dive group to show your dive buddies, you can turn around and show your dive buddies facing the camera coming toward you instead of showing images with the diver's fins in the background going away from you. And the last tip, remember composition issues. I try to get low and shoot up to show the beautiful blue water background in my dive buddy next to or above the near subject. It's great if you can show the undersurface like in this image, and it's easier if you're somewhat shallow, this really conveys depth and dimension and adds interest to the image. Again, I love capturing orange or red corals or sponges in the foreground. 
Now, it's also good to try to capture divers when they're not exhaling bubbles. This is kind of difficult to do, especially with more than one diver in the background. Somehow, I unfortunately managed to get all three of my dive buddies exhaling bubbles in this image. I just didn't depress the shutter at the right time. Too bad. And finally, try to avoid depressing the shutter when the diver profile is not good or when there's no separation between subject and background. In this image, the diver was separated from the reef, but it would have been nice if I was lower and got the trumpet fish with a blue water background too and not merged with the reef. On the other hand, this image shows a nice separation between the diver and the nearest subject and a good diver profile. So in conclusion, safety comes first. Watch your air and navigation and buoyancy and carry a safety sausage. Number two, shoot wide angle or close focus wide angle. Macro on drift dives usually leads to disappointment. Three, try not to change the camera and strobe settings very much. Once you're able to get a, a good blue water background, you have enough other things to deal with. Next, Look ahead for a potential subject. Look for the red and orange for the near subject, which is a nice complement to the blue water background. The next tip, stay ahead of your dive buddies so that you can then turn around and capture an image showing them facing you. And lastly, don't forget the composition issues. Try to get low to show the undersurface, avoid mergers, avoid poor diver profiles and diver bubbles. Well, there you have it, my tips on underwater photography with drift diving. I hope you found this helpful. I welcome any feedback and thanks for your attention.